Hi, I'm Steffen, and today I would like to talk about reproducible environments, the container software singularity, and why you should care about either one of them. Before I dive in, let me quickly say that this presentation is available online and you can follow along with the slides and the links on it at your own pace. Let's imagine you work on a project and you're more or less frequently using three different machines. You're using your small laptop, maybe Dell XPS, for most of your development work. But you're also using a computing cluster for the computationally heavy, heavy aspect of your project. And maybe even another device that has a webcam with a slightly more flattering angle. Now you could maintain the same Julia install over all three devices. But depending on how frequently you use them, that might be quite a hassle. In another example, imagine you've just finished your project and ready to publish. To maintain the and maintain and ensure the integrity of your work, it would be it would be great if we could provide our code to other people in a way that allows them to run the same code regardless of what their machine is, and will produce the results exactly, therefore proving the validity of your work. For someone else or for a different machine to produce the same results as you have seen on your prototyping machine, you need a number of things. First, of course, all of them need the same code and the same parameters. The Julia package Dr. Watson can help with this tremendously, and the package also is presented at another talk at this JuliaCon, which I recommend checking out. We also need the same packages across all devices and people. Fortunately, the package manager PKG and the manifest files already take care of that. However, there's a last aspect that sometimes gets overlooked. We, we may also need the same environment and the same binaries. While pure Julia code is already highly portable, some of the binaries may not be, and may, even if only temporary, cause problems on different setups. One way to provide the same environment to everyone is to use so-called containers. The most widely used container software is Docker, which is very feature-rich, available on every platform, and has already been successfully used for scientific computing. However, it was never designed for scientific computing, as it is mostly used for web infrastructure. In addition, it is very insecure, potentially prompting a hard no from your cluster's IT admin, as it requires super user to run and requires a constant daemon with super user privileges. This is often not feasible in a multi-user shared computing environment. One piece of software that can help with this is Singularity, which was explicitly designed with scientific computing in mind. It therefore, compute, it therefore supports various high-performance tech, integrates with resource managers, and importantly, containers can be run by any user without requiring specific privileges. You can even create containers from existing Docker files, should you already have them. In a way, Singularity is to Docker what Julia is to Python. Unfortunately, nothing in the world is perfect, and so too does Singularity come with a few caveats. First, there are no layers, so containers cannot share the same base layer to save space. Next, containers are read-only for non-super users, which on the one hand is good because it preserves their integrity, but when developing can also be a bit bad when there's unexpected write processes, or just for the expected pre-compilation stage when loading a new package. Lastly, while Singularity does run on every operating system, the experience is far from uniform. While the full singularity is available on Linux, Mac only offers a limited beta, and Windows requires the use of the Windows subsystem for Linux. But let's look at an example. Here I've built a container that contains only a absolutely minimal OS and Julia. This can be downloaded from the Synapse Cloud, that is around 140 megabytes large. After downloading it, we can open a shell within the container, and within this shell now open Julia, add a package like normal, and use it to compute some results. After we've closed the container again, we will see that we now have a new folder in the same directory as our container, which contains the files that are normally written to a user's home directory, because as stated before, the containers itself are read-only. Given our initial scenarios, we now would like to combine everything to a single shareable container that we can then send to another device, like a computing cluster, or to other people. Everything here should include the minimal OS, Julia, all packages from the manifest, and of course our own codes and scripts. To 
To facilitate this, I've created a small help package called singularity.jl. Let's consider another example, a small sample project generated using Dr. Watson. We've additionally added a small interscript, as well as a small module containing our code related to the project. We also have an old results file from times unknown. Now to package everything up, we can start Julia and local singularity package. The built-in functions can now be used to generate a definition of build file and then build a container from it. Unfortunately, the build process does require super user privileges, but every instruction from the build file gets printed by default into the terminal as they are being run. Once the build is finished, we can check out what's changed. First, we notice that the project's git ignore file has changed, and it now also ignores a few files related to containers. In addition, we have a new folder called container, which contains the log from the build process, the container itself, and the definition file that was used to build it. Now that a few packages have been included, the total container has about 220 megabytes. We can now run the container by specifying the script that we would like to run within it. Again, because the container is read-only, we need to bind the data directory within the container to a directory outside on our own hard drive. Once everything has finished, we see that we have obtained a new results file as well as a timestamp log containing potential output from the script. Let's look at our result, which we are finding to be 42. Because we have used the Dr. Watson text save function, we have also added the git commit hash and the script that we have used to compute the result to the result file. However, compared to our old result, we find that the last time we have obtained the result of 43. We can now relive the past by using the recreate data function to generate a build file that exactly mirrors the old state, including all of its packages. After building the container, we can now run it. We no longer need to specify the script we would like to run as it is baked into the container. We're choosing to bind the container project data directory to the current working directory. After finishing the run, we can evaluate the results and find that once again we have obtained 43. We can now compare the state within the container to the state on our hard drive to see what has changed. I hope this was a useful first taste into what can be done with Singularity, and I would like to finish with a short outlook. Soon I have hoped to have new Jupyter containers available that can be used to create a Jupyter notebook server within a container that's accessible outside of it. For projects that have accumulated significant history, I'm experimenting with shallow clones to create leaner and smaller containers. Further, I would like to improve robustness and add further tests and support multiple dev files at the same time. Please let me know if you have any questions and enjoy the rest of JuliaCon.